Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad Circuit Series. We're in the Moon Series, we are in Week 3, we're going to be covering all the matches from Week 3. Cannot wait, it is getting incredible. Every week so far has been amazing, these players are really just showcasing their abilities, their building skills and their battling skills and it's been amazing to see so far so massive props out to every single player that we've got involved in the circuit. I hope you all at home who are watching this are enjoying it. If you've got any favourite players that you're rooting make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below let us know who you would like to see win this moon series. I know I've got my favourites but I can't be biased because I love every single one of them that are playing and it's just a pleasure to be able to do this each and every week. If you've missed any of the episodes so far or any of the matches in the circuit so far and you want to catch up with those, go up here, I'll link a card for you lovely people. You can go back and check those out and check out all the action up to now. So, getting into week three, I'm just going to pull it up for you guys. The pairings that we've got for this week, we've got Yorain versus Imagi VGC, Stu versus Luigi, Alex versus Johnny, Pinko versus Pokemarty VGC, Hectic VGC versus Bevan, Purple versus Krim, Worms Eye versus Zen, and Will versus Shade. So some amazing matchups for us to kind of cover this week. It's going to be really exciting. So without further ado, thanks for tuning in, guys. As always, if you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like down below. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel as well, so you don't miss any of these episodes or daily battle series that we have, our guide series and all sorts of other content that we have on the channel so as I say do subscribe but we're going to kick off today with a battle between Stu and Luigi so let's get straight into this one it's going to be a hot fest so we've got Tornadus and Kyogre coming out for Stu and the Veltal and Amoogus coming out for Luigi here the rain coming to the field so you see the Dark Aura activate on Luigi's side of the field the Amoogus is going to switch out straight away Tapu Fini going to come in bring that Misty terrain to the field and protect any status as we see the Kyogre just throw out a big water spout gonna be able to be absorbed quite easily from that Eveltal but we are seeing Stu activate that flying EMZ the supersonic sky strike coming out from the Tornadus it is gonna be into that Tapu Fini doubling into that slot and is not enough just proccing the berry there and a snarl coming out from the Eveltal gonna lower the special attack on both Pokemon and Stu so the field and do some nice chip damage in the process we're gonna see the Kotar come in for that Kyogre now as a taunt comes out into that type of Finny going to prevent any shenanigans going on there as an Oblivion Wind comes out from the Veltal into the Tornadus recovering some of the health done by the Water Spout and doing some nice chip damage to the Tornadus in turn. Nature Power now coming out into the Cartana taking down 50% health as it switches out into the Incineroar going to cycle that Intimidate onto that Cartana as we see a Tailwind now set up from the Tornadus and a knockoff come out from the Cartana, removing that Assault Vest from the Eveltal. Going to see another Oblivion Wing from this Eveltal now picking up the knockout onto the Cartana. The scene is set now for Stu as he brings in that Xerneas. Got to be careful for the fake out support from that Incineroar. But we do see the Tornadus switch out for the Kyogre. Going to hit the field now. And a fake out into that Xerneas with an Oblivion Wing into the Kyogre. Going to chip that down even further. Do some nice damage to that. Veltal sitting on full health now. Not in a bad position as we see the Incineroar switch out. Amoongus going to hit the field as a Sucker Punch comes into that Kyogre. But a Scald now into that. Amoongus going to soak that up really nicely as a Geomancy comes out from this. Zerny is going to get itself powered up, set the field up for Stu to start sweeping away, but got to be very careful around that Amoongus. It's on Luigi's side of the field, so the rain does stop. Going to see the Misty Terrain stop as well. Perfect timing for that Amoongus as we see the Xerneas just protect here. Skull coming out again from the Kyogre into that Eveltal, but a Snarl coming out from the Eveltal into the Kyogre, picking up the knockout there, but blocked by that Protect from the Xerneas as a Spore comes out from the Amoongus. Tailwind has pitted out now. We're going to see the Tornadus hit the field. Tornadus going for that Taunt into the Amoongus here as we see a Sucker Punch into what you would presume would be the Tornadus. Dazzling Gleam going to come out, pick up the knockout on that Eveltal, do some nice chip damage to the Amoongus but a clear smog coming out removing those geomancy boosts and really putting Luigi back in the driving seat now as the Incineroar comes in cycles as intimidates not really affecting these special attackers we're going to see the Tornadus protect this turn Take out into that slot as another Geomancy coming out for Stu. He's not giving up just yet. Going to go for that two-turn Geomancy here as a clear smog into the Tornadus. 
Moongus gonna switch out. Tapu Fini gonna hit the field again as we see that Misty Terrain activate once more for Luigi. You're gonna see a Hurricane Blind hit the Tapu Fini and the Geomancy is now complete for Stu as he gets the second Geomancy of the game off, boosting those stats as a Flare Blitz now from the Incineroar into that Tornadus and finally picking up the knockout. But Xenia's still not in a bad position here with those Geomancy boosts behind it. Dazzling Gleam gonna come out, pick up the knockout onto the Tapu Fini and a Flare Blitz coming out from the Incineroar going to take it down to about 50% health and just proc that berry. Putting it in a nice place going into this next turn as Luigi brings in that Amoongus again and Xerneas now just struggling to close this match out. It does pick the knockout up onto that Incineroar as a clear smog coming out into the Xerneas removing those Geomancy boosts once again. Who can take this? Moonblast coming into the Amoongus. It's not quite enough and procking and revealing a Guav Berry and this is going to seal it up for Luigi as he comes back with the clear smog removing those boosts and knocking out the Xerneas. So Luigi taking game one, amazing set there to kick us off today. Going straight into game two, Stu's going to lead off with that Tornadus Kyogre and Luigi going to lead off with the Xerneas and Moongus. The rain activating on the field, that Kyogre is scoffed, it's already been revealed, it can throw up big, big attacks here. Luigi got to be careful, Water Spout coming out, going to be enough, actually picks up the knockout onto Xerneas, huge play here from Stu, as a Tornado is coming out with the Hurricane, picking up the knockout, clean knockouts here for Stu, really taking a massive lead this first game, it's second game here to pull things back, Inveltal coming out and Incineroar coming out to the field now, going to pressure that to fake out support, but we are going to see... The tornado switch out for Serena. It is going to block the fake out from the Incineroar and a water spout coming out. It is going to take down the Incineroar. Really nice play here from Stu and just really catching Luigi off guard as a snarl now coming out from that Eveltal into both targets. Going to lower the special attack on predominantly that Kyogre here as we see the game all tied up going into game three. Whoo! Crazy, crazy games. Here we go. Stu leading off with the Kyogre Tornadus and Luigi leading off with the Incineroar and Tapu Fini here. We're in that same predicament again, but the fake out support is relevant. Gotta be careful here. We do see the fake out into the Kyogre and a Hurricane just coming out straight into that Tapu Fini. Nature's Madness now from the Fini into the Kyogre, taking it down to 50% health. Going to see the Incineroar now switch out for Eveltal. Going to preserve that for later on with those Intimidates. And a Scald coming out from the Kyogre, not wanting to lock into that Water Spout as another Hurricane from the Tornadus into that Tapu Fini. As a Light Screen now set up on Luigi's side of the field, really going to help against those special type attacks that are coming out from Stu as Cortana comes in. For the Kyogre, we are going to see that Supersonic Sky Strike once again from the Tornado. It's going to launch it. Which target is it going to be into? Got to think it is into the Tapu Fini, and it will be enough behind that light screen, enough to pick up the knockout there as an Oblivion Wound comes out from the Veltal into the Cortana, doing some nice damage and recovering all that health that it's taken from the past turns. Incineroar going to come back in now, cycle that all important Intimidate onto the Cortana, and the Kyogre not on the field now. Incineroar is feeling safe, but as we say, that Kyogre coming right. Right back in for Stu as the Faker comes out into the Tornadus and the Snarl from that Eveltal going to lower the special attack on both these Pokemon. Make it really difficult, especially with that light screen up as well. We are going to see the Tornadus now switch out for the Xerneas. Thunder coming out from the Kyogre. It is into that Eveltal, but doing very minimal damage and picking up the paralysis and getting the fully paralysis on the Eveltal. U-turn now coming out from the Incineroar. Going to switch out and the Amoongus come back onto the field. That deterrent for the Xerneas on Stu's side. Stu going to go for the Geomancy. It's very risky with an Amoongus out on the field. We'll see going into this turn as the Eveltal switches out now for the Incineroar. The Protect coming out from this Xerneas as another Thunder from the Kyogre, but because the rain's not up, not connecting, not 100% accurate as a Spore comes out into that Kyogre slot, putting it to sleep. Tornadus now switching for the Kyogre. Going to come out with the Xerneas into the Cortana as well, predicting a Spore slot into that one. But the Flare Blitz from Luigi into that Cortana, picking up the KO, predicting that switch. Big play there as a Grass Knot coming now into that Tornadus. Tornadus going to be able to sock that up now very nicely as the Xerneas comes back in and starts its 
Geomancying time. So we're going to see the Tornado switch out and Kyogre hit the field now. Get that rain back up onto the field as we see the Amoongus now switch out. Fearing the hurricane from that Tornadus as Iveltal hits the field. We're going to see the Geomancy come out from the Xerneas. Is this a perfect moment for Stu to start sweeping through Luigi's team? Luigi got to be in a bad position here, but we could see a U-turn from this Incineroar, which would help him pivot out. But we're not going to see that. We're going to see just a Flare Blitz into that Kyogre slot, but because of the rain, it is able to take it. Moonblast now coming into the Iveltal. Going to be more than enough to pick up the knockout. And Stu is starting the Rampage, as we see another the flare blitz from this Incineroar into the Kyogre. Going to pick up that knockout here now, but can he deal with this Xerneas? Tornadus now coming out into the field. It's going to be the protection against that Amoongus. A Dazzling Gleam and a Hurricane. Probably going to be enough to pick up the knockout on that Amoongus. Not quite enough to pick up the knockout on the Incineroar, but we are going to see a Hurricane. Is this enough? If it is, he wins. Yes, it is enough. And now, Luigi stuck for options, really, to get rid of that Xerneas, especially with the rain at preventing the damage output from that flare blitz and Xerneas is able to close things out there so we will go straight into our next game it is going to be Alex versus Johnny so Alex going to lead off with that Incineroar and Stack Attacker and Johnny going to lead off with Persian and Xerneas so very interesting lead here from Johnny as you see the Intimidate cycle from that Incineroar fake out is on both sides of the field as we see the Xerneas switch straight out for the Amoongus he has a fake out from both sides just burning the turn here we are going to see parting shot now from that Persian into the Incineroar. Going to lower the attack and special attack of that target as Cortana hits the field now. And the Flare Blitz coming out from the Incineroar into that Moongus, but not quite enough picking up the burn. And going to see a Spore from the Amoongus shutting down that stack attack and not allowing it to move or set up a Trick Room. We are going to see the Amoongus take a little bit of burn damage, but nice it is. Proking that Berry. Wiki Berry restoring all that health now Incineroar switching out for Xerneas hitting the field for Alex as that Fairy Aura does activate. Stack Attacker also going to switch out. Smeagol going to hit the field. We've got the Smeagol Xerneas lead coming out for Alex now as we see a Sacred Sword into that Smeagol slot predicting that switch. It was into the Stack Attacker so an easy call there but Smeagol being able to hang on now with its Focus Sash and do some nice disruption for Alex's side of the field. We're going to see Cortana just withdraw and the Xerneas for Johnny come out as we see Amoongus switch places as well and the Persian now hit the field once again. We're going to see the Xerneas just protect this turn and the Spiky Shield from the Smeagol so the Moody Boost activating accuracy dropping there there as we see a faint from this Persian into the Smeagol picking up the knockout there. We are going to see a Geomancy from Johnny Xerneas. What is Alex Xerneas going to do? Is it going to follow suit? You would imagine it has to keep up pace and go for a Geomancy of its own. We are going to see. Are we going to see it? We are going to see it. There it is. There's a Geomancy. Both Xerneas is now boosted up. This Persian's got to feel a little bit scared on Johnny's side of the field because if that Incineroar comes in for Alex now, it has fake out support and the Persian is going to be in a really awkward position. Prone to being picked up here from Alex's side of the field. We are going to see a protect from the Xerneas and Johnny's side of the field as the Incineroar goes for the fake out into that slot. Dazzling Gleam now coming out from the opposing Xerneas. We're going to take down the Persian. Going to be more than enough as we see the Amoongus come onto the field now for Johnny. We are going to see Incineroar retreat as Stack Attacker hits the field once again for Alex as the Xerneas just protects on Alex's side of the field. Moonblast coming out now into that Stack Attacker. Going to do big damage. Big damage. Putting it in range of a Dazzling Gleam potentially this next turn. And that Xerneas on Alex's side of the field has got to feel threatened. Moonblast again coming out into that Stack Attacker. Going to be enough to pick up the knockout there. Moonblast from Alex's Xerneas into Johnny's Xerneas. Clear Smog. Going to seal up the deal almost for Johnny here. Removing those Geomancy boosts. And putting Johnny in such a nice position going into this next turn. Now we've got to wait out and hopefully get through this fake out turn here as we see a protect from the opposing Xerneas. As we see a fake out into the Amoongus and a Dazzling Gleam going to be there, but not enough to do damage onto this Amoongus. Moonblast now from Johnny Xerneas into the Incineroar on Alex's side of the field. And that lowly Xerneas on Alex's side going to be able to throw out a Moonblast, but not going to be doing enough damage against this Geomancy boosted Xerneas. So Johnny looking like he is going to pick this one up here as we go straight into game two. How are both trainers going to adapt and change things up here? We are going to see Alex lead off with that Incineroar and Xerneas this time around. And the Persian and Cortana come out for Johnny. We see the Intimidate cycle from the Incineroar on Alex's side of the field. So you see that Xerneas switch straight out. Doesn't want to entertain any 
any time on the field here as Groudon comes in, brings that sun with it. We are seeing the Incineroar switch out straight away as well. The stack attacker hitting the field, fake out into that stack attacker slot and a tailwind from this Cortana. Setting the speed control up on Johnny's side of the field, but he's got to be a bit worried about the potential trick room from that stack attacker. Stack attacker number no one is stay on the field though as Incineroar takes his place, cycling those intimidates once again as Groudon just protects his turn, holding out as a foul play comes out into the Incineroar, doing nice chip damage with a follow up from a sacred sword. Incineroar is taking a bit of damage here, but it's in a nice position to get that fake out support, which it is pressuring onto the Cortana now. We are seeing the Persian just using that parting shot, lowering the attack and special attack on that Groudon as Xerneas now hitting the field for Johnny. Is he going to take this potential moment to go for that Geomancy? He's in a nice position to do so. So you see the Cortana switch out again for that Persian. Groudon going to now switch out for the stack attacker as the Geomancy is coming out from this Xerneas. Going to boost that special attack, special defense and speed and become a real threat on Johnny's side of the field. Flare Blitz coming out now from the Incineroar into the Persian, doing big damage there because of the sun and proccing its own very putting it in a nice position going to this next turn as a Tailwind pillars out. We're going to see the fake up from the Persian into that stack attacker, going to deny it any movement this next turn as a Dazzling Ying comes out into both Pokemon doing really respectable damage, but a roll revealed from the Incineroar now, removing the Geomancy and the Xerneas from the field as a stack attacker retreats for the Groudon, bringing back that sun after it has faded, seeing a parting shot from the Persian into that Incineroar now and what is Johnny going to bring back onto the field? It's going to be Cortana going to bring back that Origami Beast but a Flare Blitz into the Amoongus not quite enough to pick up the knockout but the recoil is enough to take down that Incineroar as the Berry procs on the Amoongus giving all that health back and sporing into that Groudon slot so the Xerneas now coming back out for Alex. Can He has got the Geomancy in the locker but can he go for it in front of these two threats here? We we are seeing a Leaf Blade into the ground. I'm going to do big damage. Potentially put it in range for this Moongus to pick up the knockout. But a Spore coming out into that Xerneas here. We are seeing the Groudon retreat as the Stack Attacker takes the field for the Groudon. Johnny predicting that switch. Going for the big play into the Stack Attacker. Getting that Beast Boost as we see the Xerneas now. Locking in to that Geomancy. It is going to Geomancy up, get those boosts up. But if Johnny's Moongus has went for that Clear Smog or a Spore here... Alex's momentum is all but lost going into this next turn and we do see the spore. Xerneas is not going to be able to attack as the Groudon coming in. Both sleeping targets on the field for Alex. He needs something to wake up. Unfortunately, neither do as the Leaf Blade coming out into the Groudon. Going to obtain another Beast Boost. As you've got to imagine a Clear Smog going to come out here for the Amoongus and pick up another win for Johnny who is having a phenomenal start to this series. So, going into our next game, we're going to cover Pinko VGC versus Marty VGC. So here we go, Marty gonna lead off with the Tapacoco and Lunala. Pinko gonna lead off with the Aromatis and the Lorantis. What a crazy combination here for Pinko. We're gonna see a Protect from the Lorantis this first turn as a Volt Switch coming in from the Coco into that Aromatis doing some nice damage there. And Cortana now hitting the field. What we're gonna see from this Lunala, just a Moongeist Beam, it is into that Aromatis. Trying to pick up the knockout here, but Aromatis hanging on and getting the trick room off and turn the dimensions. Cortana are now retreating back into that Tapacoco. Going to preserve it for later. There's a Moonblast into the Tapacoco slot and a Superpower into that slot as well. Bolstering the defenses on that Lorantis and its attack as well. We are now going to see the Z move from Lunala on Marty's side of the field. You've got to think it is going to be into that Lorantis. But will it be enough? It's not it hangs on crazy Iapa Berry procking there we can see in the Tapu Koko protect this next turn as the Aromatis goes for a Moonblast now into that Lunala breaking that Shadow Shield we're going to see a knockoff we are and it is going to be enough to pick up that Lunala Pinko making some big strides early on in this match. Now we see the Xerneas hit the field. It is activating that Fairy Aura. We're going to see the Xerneas switch straight out though for Marty. He's kind of basing in that target there as Katana hits the field. We're going to see a Heal Pulse from the Aromatis <laughs> into the Lorantis as another superpower comes out. It's going to be enough to pick up the knockout onto the Tapu Koko. And these two are ripping through Marty's side of the field. We're going to see that Xerneas now return to the field as we see 
the charm come out from the aromatics into that Cardano Gonna lower its attack stat as a Leaf Blade into the Xenius doing about 50% damage as a Geomancy coming out from Marty. Last ditch attempt to try and salvage this game here as he boosts that special attack, special defense and speed on his side of the field with the Trick Room pending. Finishing here is a Sacred Sword coming out. Trick Room does end. And a Moonblast now coming out from the Xerneas. It is going to pick up the knockout onto the Lorantis. But we do see a Smart Strike into that Aromatease. And a Bibbery Berry activating and being revealed for Pinko there. So nice information for Marty going into this next game. As we are going to see Incineroar and Dustman. The Crosma now hit the field. And Cartana and Xerneas are the last things that they want to be facing down against right now is that Incineroar and the Dismin across. Now that charm turn from Pinko was so huge, making it so viable and really shutting down that Cortana from being able to do anything. We are going to see the Trick Room now set up from that Dismin across, and this will be game because the Sun Steel Strike will be more than enough to pick up the knockout onto that Xerneas, and it's simple Flare Blitz from this Incineroar are going to be enough to pick up the one shot on that Cortana. Incredible game, incredible game. What a way to kick us off. Massive props to Pinko playing all the odd things here with that Aromatease. We're gonna see it again going into game two as we see Marty switch things up with a Smeagol and Xerneas lead and Pinko switching it up as well with an Incineroar and now bringing that Crobat into the fold. So we are gonna see Incineroar go for that fake out, no? fake out from the Smeagol as we see a Z move. Is it going to be a supersonic sky strike? No, it's going to be a Z tailwind from that Crobat boosting those critical hit chances while it sets up the speed control for the team. Going to see a lovely kiss though from the Smeagol. Nice play there from Marty. Shutting down that Crobat into these future turns as we see Crobat now switching out. Necrozma going to hit the field now. Take advantage of this Tailwind. It's going to find it difficult. It's normally a slow Pokemon as a Snarl comes out from this Incineroar. It's both targets breaking the Sash on that Smeagol and lowering a special attack on that Xerneas in case it does go for a setup attack. We're going to see another lovely kiss from this Smeagol now. It is going to be hitting into that Incineroar, shutting that down this next turn. As this Meagle does get a moody speed boost here going into this next turn. Zenny is going to retreat now as Lunala hits the field. And we're going to see another lovely kiss from this Meagle into the Dustman and Cosmo, which protects this turn as we see another moody boost. But the defense falling there on this Meagle. Now, Smeagol going to retreat. Carton are going to hit the field for Marty here. And then Cosmo is under a lot of pressure. as we are going to see the Z-move. Got to imagine it is into that Dustman across it threatens the Xerneas so heavily. Marty has to chase that slot as we do see it. It is into the Crobat and we are going to see it pick up the one hit KO. Dustman across it coming back in but got to feel a little bit safer now because of that Z-move being used by Marty. We're going to see a protect from the Lunala, protect from the Dustman across it. Sacred Sword into that Incineroar. Not going to be quite enough as a Snarl comes out into both targets, but the Lunala, who has protected, protected this turn. Still got that Shadow Shield intact. Sacred Sword now coming out again into that Incineroar slot. Going to be enough to pick up the knockout there and claim a Beast Boost for that Cortana. Moongas Beam coming in to the Dustman across it. As you've got to imagine, if it can survive this, it goes for the Trick Room. We are seeing a weakness policy activate on this Necrozma. Going to become a huge threat very quickly as the Trick Room comes active. And Kyogre now hitting the field for Pinko. Marty side of the field under a lot of pressure as this potential Water Spell coming out. And the Smeagol coming back in. Sunsteel Strike going to hit into that Cartana slot doing nice damage as a water spout following up from the Kyogre and enough to clear the field here. And Pinko from the break is coming back and really throwing this to Marty side of the field as Lunala and Xerneas now come back in. Both these restrictors feeling a little bit pressure because of this trick room. Lunala going to protect here as we see another Sunseal Strike into that slot with a water spout coming out from the Kyogre. Going to hit into that Xerneas and not quite pick up the knockout with a Moonblast now into that Kyogre doing nice respectable damage. You're going to see the protect from the Xerneas here as we see Sunseal Strike into this Lunala this time around. It is plus two even though it's through the Shadow Shield. Does huge damage. Is the Skull going to be enough? It is is not enough to pick up the knockout with a moon guys beam coming out from the lunala which target is it into picks up the knockout onto that necrozma kyoga left on pingo's side of the field has he got enough to finish this one out water spell coming out crazy end to this match crazy end and pinko picking up what is an incredible win what a match and now we're going into our next match which is going to be shade versus will so what we're 
better to go into this next one. We're going to say Shade lead off with that Incineroar and Sogalea and will lead off with Smeagol and Lunala here. Wow, what a la <laughs> that last match was crazy. We're going to see the Sogaleo switch out now from the Tapu Fini and bring that Misty Serene to the field, protect against those lovely kisses from that Smeagol going into these next few turns. Tailwind coming out from the Lunala now. Incineroar flinched from the fake out from that Smeagol as we see some moody boosts and we are going to see the Lunala now retreat to another for another time as the Kyogre now hits the field, brings that rain with it. The Smeagol goes for a follow me, detracting any damage from that Kyogre this turn with a Nature's Madness going into that slot. Missing, unfortunately, but a Snarl coming out from the Incineroar. All important onto that Kyogre, reducing that special attack there and chipping away at that Smeagol and removing that Focus Sash that it's got possibly intact. Toxicroak now hitting the field for the Incineroar and going to be able to soak up any water type attacks as an Ice Beam comes out now from that. Kyogre into that Toxicroak, predicting the switch there from Will. Nice play there, not throwing out these water type attacks. There's a light screen set up from this Tapu Fini. Kyogre going to retreat now. Cortana going to come back onto the field, so threatening both these Pokemon on Shade side of the field. As we see Smeagol just go for that spiky shield with the Nature's Madness into that Cortana slot and a Poison Jab into that Smeagol. Going to take a little bit of damage from those spiky shield, but the rain going to be more than enough to recover that from Tailwind on Will side of the field. Going to end now as we see the Tapu Fini on Shade Shade side go straight out for the Sogaleo with a follow me coming out from the Smeagol. Going to see a knockoff come out from the Cortana. Not going to be enough to pick up anywhere near a knockout, but a poison jab into that Smeagol, picking up the knockout there and the dry skin once again, recovering that health for Shade now. Can will make use of this Lunala to get rid of the Toxicroak. Toxicroak is going to be the one thing stopping this Kyogre from really performing here. We're going to see a Sucker Punch into the Lunala. And what is this? It's going to be Z move from the Lunala now. It's got to be into that Sogaleo. It is and picks up the one hit KO onto that Sugalea, removing that from the field. But you've got to think it might have been more useful to go for that Toxicroak as it is really hindering the ability of this Kyogre here. Gonna see the Lunala just protect as the Incineroar hits the field, goes for that Sucker Punch into the Kyogre. Water Spout coming out, the rain has ended though, so not gonna be hitting as hard. Incineroar able to take that as a Flare Blitz goes into that Lunala here. The light screen has worn off for Shade, so he needs to be a bit more careful if that Kyogre comes back in. Cortana now hitting the field. Sucker Punch coming out into that Lunala but not baiting it in. Going for the Tailwind as a Flare Blitz now. Coming into that Cortana slot. Predicting maybe a switch there that the Kyogre goes out to get that rain back up. Breaking up a huge KO onto that Cortana as the Kyogre now hits the field. But things are going to be difficult because this Toxicroak has Sucker Punch. It's going to be able to pick up the knockout onto this Lunala. We are going to see the Incineroar switch back out now. The Misty Terrain going to hit the field as a Sucker Punch comes out into the Lunala. Picking up the knockout and you've got to think Will's ability to remove this Toxic Croak is going to be hindered severely now. He's only got those Thunders to rely on and we are going to see Incineroar hit the field once again as that Tapu Fini drops to a Thunder from the Kyogre. Fake Out going to be in and then Shade picks up the win. We are going to go straight into game two. We're going to see Shade lead off once again with that Incineroar and Sogaleo as Will leads off with the Smeagol and Lunala again. So going to see the Sogaleo switch straight out into Tapu Fini this time. Not going to take any damage, not chancing it and getting that Misty Terrain up. Fake out again into that Incineroar slot, but will launching off a Z move straight away, wanting to try and snipe that Sogaleo, but going into the Tapu Fini, not going to be enough to pick up the KO and activating that Wiki Berry, giving it all that nice health back. We're going to see an evasion fall from this Meagle as a Lunala now retreats and Tapu Lele hit the field. Bring that Psychic Terrain with it, removing the Misty Terrain. There's a lovely kiss coming out here from Will. Going to shut down that Tapu Fini from being able to do anything. And what we're going to see this Incineroar go for, just another Snarl and cycle those out. Reduce the special attack damage on the Tapu Lele and break that potential sash on the Smeagol that hasn't been revealed yet, I will just say. So we're going to see the Tapu Lele switch straight back out. Kyogre now going to hit the field and bring the rain with it. The Tapu Fini on Shade side of the field is switching out now back into that Sogaleo and the spiky shield coming out from the Smeagol just to make sure it's around for this next turn and take good care of this Kyogre on Will side of the field. We are going to see the Sogaleo switch straight back out full shade and that Toxicroak take the field again to suck up all those water type attacks as we see the Incineroar switch out straight away for that Tapu Fini predicting maybe a big water spout to come out here from the Kyogre 
and that's what we're going to see. It is not going to affect this Toxicroak and Tapu Fini going to be able to sap it up pretty nicely. We're going to see the Kyogre now switch straight back out into the Smeagol. Toxicroak, we're going to retreat back into the Solgaleo here as we see a Tailwind set up now from this Lunala and Will side of the field. And the Tapu Fini stays asleep, unfortunately, as we see Moody, Moody Boost activate on the Evasia side as the Lunala switches back out into that Tapu Lele. Got to think the Smeagol wants to go for that lovely kiss into that Solgaleo slot and shut that down as the Toxic Croak now enters the field once again. Lovely Kiss coming out into that Sogoleo, putting it to sleep and shutting it down, protecting that Tapu Lele going to this next turn. Toxic Croak is in a really, really tight position now from the Tapu Lele, so probably want to see it switch out this next turn as we see the Smeagol got out now for the Kyogre and really nice play there from Will, but also a nice play again from Shade just to make sure that he is keeping that messy terrain around on the field to protect from future Sleep turns as the Sogaleo wakes up this turn. Trick Room set up and the rain does stop. So we are going to see Toxic Croak hit the field now. Pressuring that Tapu Lele, Pressuring the Kyogre. As we see this Smeagol come back in. Poison Jab into that Tapu Lele slot. Going to pick up the one hit kill. Going to make sure that that Misty Terrain sticks around on the field. With a Sunsteel Strike coming out from this Sogaleo. Into the Smeagol. Picking up the knockout. And Shade now in a really nice position with this Trick Room set up. To just start this slow switch against Will. Will's not in the worst of places as well as the Kyogre comes in with the rain. Origin Pulse gonna come out from the Kyogre. Gonna pick up nice damage from this Sogaleo as we see a Z move from the Sogaleo. Where's it gonna be into? Is it gonna be into that Lunala? Stelium Z into the Kyogre. Oh, it's not quite enough to pick up the knockout onto the Kyogre. Moongeist Beam into the Sogaleo picking up the knockout there. And the Toxicroc in a really nice position to still pressure that Kyogre as Incineroar now hits the field. Sucker Punch into the Kyogre picking up the knockout there. Snarl coming out breaking that Shadow Shield on the Lunala for Shade, putting himself in a really nice position. Shy Shock gonna come out from the Lunala, pick up the knockout on the Toxicroak, but it's done its job. Lunala in a real tight spot now, not got any output to damage this Incineroar with another Snarl. The Trick Room does end, but you can't see any other way of this ending. Moongeist Beam coming in to the Incineroar from Will's side of the field. Minimal damage after the Snarls, and another one gonna take it down. Next one is gonna be enough to finish up the game. As we see, another Moongeist Beam. How much is this gonna do? 4 HP as another Snarl comes out from Shade and he is going to take this game. Incredible set from both of these incredible players. So what a great way to kind of finish off the DS matches. We are going into our next one here and we're going to go into this one. The rest of the matches in this series are going to be all on showdown but they should be rapid and quick. So the first one we're going to look at today is Magi VGC versus Urine. So we're going to see... Let's get straight into it, guys. So hopefully the view isn't too bad. Give me your feedback for future episodes. We're going to see Urine lead off with Zazonius and Smeagol and Imagine lead off with Tapu Lele and Excelgo. We're going to see a Struggle Bug come out from the Excelgo. Reduce the special attack on Urine's side of the field as a Psychic comes out and picks up the knockout onto that Smeagol. We're going to see the Kyogre now hit the field with Xerneas protecting as we see an Encore come out from the Excelgo but blocked by that protect there. As we see, Urine forced to switch out that Xerneas. Groudon going to hit the field now as the Snarl comes out, picks up the knockout potentially. No, picking up chip damage onto that Excel goal now. We're going to see an Acid Spray into the Groudon and pick up the knockout there. And this Excel goal is doing so much work for Amagi VGC. You see another Acid Spray and even in the sun, this Kyogre is just ripping through with those special defense drops from this Excel goal. As you see, the Tapu Lele going to come in now and going to be enough to pick up the knockout onto the Xerneas as Urine fishing for as much information as possible going into this game too. We are seeing Amagi take an early lead here, but we'll go straight into game two. As we go straight into game two, Yorin leading off with Talonflame and Xerneas here as we see the Kyogre and the Serena for Imagi VGC. Groudon going to come straight in and remove that rain from the field with the, the sun coming out as the Geomancy coming out from that Xerneas. Yorin put himself in a great position here going into this next turn as Dazzling Gleam does big damage to that Kyogre. The Groudon picking up the KO onto that Serena. Magi's Xerneas going to protect this turn as the 
Xerneas on your inside of the field is enough to pick up the knockout onto that opposing Kyogre. Fake out from the Incineroar onto the Xerneas here. Gonna prevent any turns from moving as the Precipice Blades comes out. Dazzling Gleam gonna come out and Dazzling Gleam again gonna come out from Yorine and the Talonflame now. The only thing left on the field with that Tailwind coming out and it still survives. Protect coming out from the opposing Xerneas and the Magister of the field. And Yorine putting himself in a really nice position to close this one out and tying up this set. So what an incredible two sets we've had here and we'll go straight into game three and see who can come out victorious in this one this week. So I'm gonna see Yorine lead off with the Xerneas and Talonflame this time around with Imagi leading off with the Incineroar and the Xerneas here. Fake out into that Talonflame, breaking the Gale Wings ability as a Geomancy coming out from Yorine's Xerneas. Geomancy coming out from Imagi's Xerneas. So Geomancy, Geomancy. We're going to see a Moonblast into Yorine's Xerneas here as a Snarl comes out from Imagi's Incineroar and a Dazzling Gleam followed up by Yorine's Xerneas here as the Tailwind is set up with a Brave Bird coming out into that Incineroar but not quite enough to pick up the knockout after the Dazzling Gleam Brave Bird combination here and a Snarl now coming out reducing the attack damage on Yorine's Xerneas. Talonflame now going to be knocked out by a Moonblast from the opposing Xerneas as Tapu Lele hits the field but Yorine bringing in Tapu Fini straight away going to be able to remove that Psychic Terrain. A Taunt coming out and block Blocking the light screen from your inside of the field with the opposing Xerneas now able to pick up your iron Xerneas and you've got to imagine now your in a real tight spot to be able to close this one out we are going to see the type of Finny go for a nature's madness into the Xerneas Groudon can it survive it can take it it is going to be a heal pulse and get the precipice blades but it misses double miss that is crazy and oh that is going to be it for your iron you've got to think that precipice blades needed to hit there and that is cruelty that is awful for Urine. If he was able to remove those two from the field there, you've got to think he would have had a chance to come back. But Precipice Blade's just been so punishing and just really horrible in this situation. But really good game to both players. So going into our first match with Worm's Eye versus Zeph, we're going to see Sogoleo and Alolan Marowak come out for Zeph as their Ludicolo and Kyogre come out for Nigel. Fake out into the Sogoleo Protect and a Water Spout there from the Kyogre. We're going to see the Marowak switch out for Incineroar and the Waterium Z from the Ludicolo into that slot, picking up the knockout. Single target Water Spout into the Sogoleo, not able to survive unfortunately as Wishy Washy and Marowak hit the field again. But that is going to be it for Zeph on this occasion which is really unfortunate not able to get that trick room up and you've got to think that that's what his game plan is going into this next one if you get the trick room up get the wishy-washy activated get the Marowak into a nice position to th throw out damage but this Kyogre Ludicolo from Nigel is just so overwhelming here we go into game two we're going to see Zeph this time lead off with the Tornadus and Incineroar and the Ludicolo Kyogre come out again from Nigel going to stop that Tornadus from attacking this turn and the Incineroar going to do the same to the Kyogre we're going to see Tailwind now from Zen's side of the field as a Water Spout and a Scald come out into that Tornadus Incineroar the Tailwind is set up so Nigel isn't in the best of positions but we are going to just see a forfeit from Zenf, and that is unfortunate just with the resources that he had left doesn't feel like he's got enough to come back in this game to beat the Ludicolo which is probably going to be picking up the knockout onto that Kyogre potentially the next turn in the Sogaleo just not got enough in the tank to clean up these two and another two Pokemon in the back so really good set from both players as you can see on your screen now guys we're going to just show the results we've had a few games that have been delayed due to other issues in the circuit so and um, Bebem has not been too well over the last week or two so we'll just give him a massive shout out just to say hopefully you're feeling better very soon my friend and we'll look forward to featuring your matches in the coming weeks and um, so that match has been postponed for a little while we'll have that featured in the coming weeks and then Krim versus Purple who's a new player introduced into the circuit who we're going to be catching up with in the coming weeks as well so you can see the results here we've got Yorine versus Imagine VGC who we just ended with their um, uh, 2 1 win for a match. You got Stu who beat Luigi 2 1 and kicked us off today. Alex 0, Johnny 2 in that incredible set earlier on. Pinko VGC 2. Pokemon VGC nil, Pinko pulling out some incredible strategies there with that Aromatis and being able to just storm through that team of Martys. What an incredible set we had there. We saw Worm's Eye 2 and Zen uh, nil there with the just the overwhelming power of that Kyogre Ludicolo coming out again from Nigel. 
We've got Shade beating Will 2-0 and pulling out an incredible set from both of those players. Very exciting. So that wraps up that. Let's take a look at the leaderboard here. Just bearing in mind that we've got a couple of players that have missed games this week. So we will be catching up on them. But we've got Johnny Hacks leading the way flawless victories so far and just making a big statement going into the rest of the series he's topping the lead here by win difference you've got Stu Claus hot on his heels in second place Luigi in third Shade in fourth Will in fifth Pinko creeping up on everyone coming back with two wins this last two weeks who in sixth place Nigel in seventh place we've got Alex in eighth Imagi VGC in ninth Yorine in tenth Krim in 11th with a game in hand you've got to remember there Hectic in 12th another game in hand for Hectic Purple he's going to be playing all of his sets so far so all the weeks previous he'll be playing all of those again so those results will update as we go through the series Pokemarty down in 14th Bebum down in 15th and Xenophis down in 16th so they are the league table going into the end of week 3 and uh, we've had the results there so we'll end up there guys thank you so much for tuning in I mean it's been crazy I mean you go back and watch week 1 and 2 and you think how can this get any better how can these players make this any better and oh my gosh just massive props to every player that we've had featured this week it's been incredible and i cannot wait to bring you week four really i can't i want to start working on it right now and we'll have that with you as soon as possible just thank you so much for tuning in hope you've enjoyed today's matches that we featured and we'll be back for more flinch squad circuit very soon remember to leave a comment in the comment section below and we'll see you all again for our next episode which will be week four don't miss it out. Make sure you do subscribe so you know when that comes out. But thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Take care of yourselves. Have a great evening, afternoon, morning, whatever time of day it is. And I'll see you for the next one. So until then, guys, take care and bye-bye.